Everything okay? Oh, oh it's big. Oh, big. It's big. Oh, oh it's new, great. Oh, new stuff? Whole new group of animals from fauna in the far north of Canada, a place called Banks Island. Banks Island. Didn't know it existed. Arctic Canada. It's, a, it's an Eocene fauna. It's like 50 million years old. Post-dinosaur extinction stuff. That's the, that's the beginning of the age of mammal. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got fossils that look almost exactly like the ones from this fauna in my hand right here. Yeah, yeah. That's it? This is junk. What? This is this is just scraps. I'm giving you gold here. Gold? Gold, this is what paleontologists like pick over and then find more interesting fossils nearby. This is this is a, a scrappy vertebra. This is what, like a fish scale and a, a little chunk of fish vertebrae. I gotta explain this to you, don't I? Yes. Yes you do. This is a story of a handful of bones and the stories they can tell. I'm Adam Pritchard. And I'm Matt Bortz. And you are watching Pastime. <laughs> The fossils Adam is talking about are from this spot, Banks Island in the Northwest Territories of Canada. And this new study was written by Jalen Eberle from the University of Colorado and other colleague paleontologists working on Banks Island. Fossils have been discovered on Banks Island before, but these were things like sharks and other marine animals. These fossils are special because they don't represent animals that you expect to find in a marine environment. They represent freshwater animals that happen to get preserved in this site. These are the fossils from Banks Island, and the big one on the right is a vertebrae of a crocodilian. Crocodilians are the group of animals that include crocodiles, gharials, caimans, and, important for this story, alligators. And the presence of a crocodilian way up in the Arctic is really important for understanding the biogeography of this group of animals. Biogeography is the study of the distribution of animals and how it got to be the way it is. Because the animals aren't distributed evenly across the world. And one classic example of a biogeographic mystery is the story of the alligator. So in the world today, there are two species of alligators. The one you probably know is the American alligator that lives in the southeast of the United States. The other species is less well known, but you might see it if you go to a zoo. The Chinese alligator. The Chinese alligator is a very, very endangered animal that lives in some regions in the far east of China. So the question becomes, where and when did alligators cross between North America and Asia? You might think that alligators wouldn't have a big issue getting from one continent to the other. Crocs can swim, why can't alligators? Because not all animals can tolerate all water environments. Many are specifically evolved to deal with fresh or salt water. And among crocodilians, alligators are particularly bad at dealing with salt water environments. Somehow, the common ancestor of American alligators and Chinese alligators got between Asia and North America without touching salt water. Which means, ironically, for an animal that spends a lot of its time in the water, we need land. Because fresh water is only found in environments that are on land. That's the definition of fresh water. And Banks Island sits right at the edge of a lost land connection that would have had fresh water between Asia and North America. So geologists and paleontologists have given a special name to this lost connection between Asia and North America. They call it Beringia. And Beringia is also called the Beringian Land Bridge. And that's exactly how it worked. It was this bridge that connected Asia to North America. The land bridge was exposed about 35,000 years ago, which really isn't all that long ago in geological time. Animals like woolly mammoths took it from Asia into North America, while animals like camels took it from North America over into Asia. Now in the case of the American and Chinese alligators, we can't explain that distribution by having the animals recently walk across the Arctic ice sheet. Alligators aren't particularly well known for living in the high Arctic. Right, so in order to get alligators between Asia and North America, we need to find a time when there's a connection between the continents, but it's warm enough to support the common ancestor of these alligators. So are we talking about some kind of lush tropical jungle up in the Arctic? Alligators aren't really particularly tropical animals. They do prefer warm environments, but they live in somewhat temperate forests like the one I'm sitting in right now. Remember, up to this point, the record of Banks Island was all about marine stuff. 
Now paleontologists had to look at this new record from Banks Island to figure out if the forests of the island 50 million years ago would make a good home for alligators. So people who study flowers and plants are called botanists, and people who study the fossils of plants are called paleobotanists. So paleobotanists are able to recognize extinct species of plants based on their leaves, based on their flowers, but they're also able to recognize species and families of plants by looking at the pollen. <laughs> Every plant makes millions of grains of pollen, and that pollen gets deposited with newly forming rocks. The paleobotanists were able to determine that there were oak trees present at Banks Island. The pollen grains showed that this was a temperate forest, despite being way above the Arctic Circle. Now let's take a look at the other scrappy fossils that were found with the crocodilian vertebrae. These are the scales of a fish called a gar, and there's also the backbone of a fish called a bowfin and a northern pike. The bowfin is this huge fish that um, is actually found today in the Mississippi River. Another animal that was found is an animal called a gar. And gar are these really toothy fish that are covered in these scales that, are, that have enamel on them. Enamel is the same stuff that makes our teeth. And so gar scales are a really easy thing to enter the fossil record. If there are gar, you will find their scales. Now a pike is an animal you would find today in the high Arctic. They're animals that can deal with cold. But bowfin and gar are very much like alligators in that they need a warmer climate in order to survive. And the presence of that crocodile relative and those fish up in the high Arctic suggests the perfect kind of environment to allow alligators to cross between North America and Asia, just like we knew they should have. So Adam interrupted my very important work in the museum to take me outside to demonstrate that with just a handful of really scrappy fossils that you can tell big stories about alligators crossing between continents, you can tell stories about what the weather was like at the Arctic Circle, and what kinds of fish were getting all the way up there and making their homes up there too. Be sure to listen to the Pastime Podcast at www.pastime.org or follow us on Twitter at Pastime Paleo. You can even find us on Facebook. And with that, my name is Matt Bortz. I'm Adam Pritchard. And we'll see you next time on Pastime. Because we'll see you this time, because you know it's video. Yeah, so like we're not just talking. It's great. Yeah. Yeah.